Hi students, today I am going to discuss the third block in your first year English textbook. The title of the block is Beyond the Horizon. The entire block speaks about the various aspects of travel. There are three striking chapters in the third block. The first one is a poem by H.W. Longfellow, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. The title of the poem is Sunrise on the Hills. The second chapter is a travel essay by a very famous French essayist and story writer, Guy de Maupassant. And the last chapter is an extract from a very famous Fijian legend. The title of that chapter is The Sacred Turtles of Kandav. All these chapters exclusively deal with the various aspects of travel. These chapters present travel at three different levels. The block presents travel at three different levels. The first chapter, Sunrise on the Hills, presents travel as an enjoyment of scenic beauty. The second chapter, The Trip of Le Hurla, by Guy de Maupassant, presents travel as an outlet for our adventurous seal. And the third chapter, The Sacred Turtles of Kandava, presents travel as an exploration to the real identity of a place, the real self of a land, which is embedded in its culture, customs, traditions, and rituals. Traveling increases our knowledge. It is an experience which broadens the boundaries of our knowledge. And that is the reason why the title of the block is Beyond the Horizon. It increases our knowledge. It widens our perspective. It gives us a new perspective of life. Especially about our life. It provides us a sense of adventure. And travel also opens doors to different cultures, traditions, rituals, etc. Travel helps us to disconnect ourselves from our day-to-day -day life. Travel helps us to disconnect ourselves from the dull, mundane, routine life. Helps us to refresh ourselves, rejuvenate us so that we can continue our life, continue our journey, resume our life rejuvenated or re-energized. The first chapter, Sunrise on the Hills by a very famous American poet, Henry Wordsworth Longfellow. The poem celebrates the beauty of nature. There are three stanzas in the poem. The first stanza consists of 18 lines. The second one, 12 lines. And the last one, six lines. In the first two stanzas, we come across so many images, visual, auditory and kinesthetic images. You all know the various images used by writers and poets. The various images used by writers are visual images, auditory images, kinesthetic images, olfactory images, gustatory images, tactile and organic images. So these are the various images used by poets and writers in their works. Here Henry Wordsworth Longfellow has used three prominent types of images in his poem Sunrise on the Hills. The first prominent one, the first prominent type of image that he employs in his poem Sunrise on the Hills is visual image. There are so many examples of visual images in his poem. Two other prominent types of images used by Henry Wordsworth Longfellow in his poem Sunrise on the Hills are kinesthetic images and auditory images. 
in the first two stanzas of the poem we come across so many visual auditory and kinesthetic images you can expect a question in your examination prepare a write up on the various images that you find in the poem sunrise on the hills by henry wordsworth longfellow there you have to prepare a write up on the various types of visual images kinesthetic images and auditory images used by the poet in the poem sunrise on the hills there are so many visual images in the first stanza two striking images can be found in the first two lines of the poem the first one is heaven's wide arch which refers to sky heaven's wide arch was glorious with the sun's returning march sun's returning march can be considered as another visual image the glorious majestic returning march of sun the returning march of sun can be compared to the returning march of a mighty warrior after a great victory in the battle field the sun's returning march to the sky after night's rest so the sky was glorious with the sun's returning march another striking visual image used in the first stanza soft gales went forth to kiss the sun clad whales soft gale a striking figure of speech is used the figure of speech used there is oxymoron a gale cannot be soft but the poet here has employed that expression soft gales a perfect example of oxymoron two contradictory ideas are forcefully combined together but that expression communicates great sense soft gales went forth to kiss the sun clad whales another beautiful visual image sun clad whales a valley which is covered by which is clothed by sun which is covered by sunlight which is basked in sunlight soft gales went forth to kiss the sun clad whales a beautiful visual image has been employed by poet henry wordsworth longfellow in the poem sunrise on the hills another striking image the clouds disappear from the sky like a host overthrown in battlefield like a defeated army fleeing away from the battlefield the mist cover or the cover of the clouds disappear from the sky like a defeated army fleeing away from the battlefield the figure of speech used there is simile and you find a beautiful image there the image of a defeated army running away from the battlefield fleeing away from the battlefield similarly the clouds disappear from the sky when the sun comes up another beautiful visual image can be seen in the first stanza of the poem the beautiful image is that of a blasted bare and cleft pine tree which was rocking on the cliff which was shaking on the shivering on the cliff and the last striking visual image that we can find in the first stanza is the river the flowing river which is darkened by the shade of the woods and glistened in the white cascade when we go through the first stanza we come across so many powerful visual images towards the end of the first stanza we find a beautiful kinesthetic image the noisy bittern wheeled his spiral way the movement of the bittern is described there a kinesthetic image is used towards the end of the first stanza in the second stanza we find so many examples of kinesthetic images and auditory images in the second stanza we find two powerful kinesthetic images the first one the whirling current 
the whirling current of water and the second one the bending woods some examples of auditory images can also be seen can also be found in the poem sunrise on the hills the first one noisy bitten the second one an onomatopoeic sound is an onomatopoeic word is used there the water flashing against the shore of the lake flash an onomatopoeic word is used example of auditory image the music of the village bell the echo giving hills the voice of the wild horn the sudden shot etc are examples of auditory images that you find in the second stanza of the poem so in the first two stanzas we come across so many powerful images visual kinesthetic and auditory images all these images add beauty to the poem all these images are employed by the poet to celebrate the beauty of nature and when we go to the last stanza the last stanza consists of just six lines the last stanza is brief because the stanza gives the message of the poem messages should be brief they should be concise the last stanza speaks about the message of the poem the poet says if you are tired if you are affected in a harmful way with the sorrows from all sides if you are unable to read a lesson which helps your heart from fainting and you are sore from sleep go to the woods no tears can dim the beauty that nature wears no tears can dim the beauty of nature this is the message of the poem if you are in distress if you are in anxiety if you face troubles if you face difficulties in your life if we are infested with various problems in our life you need not be disheartened you need not be disappointed go back to the lap of nature nature will definitely comfort you nature will definitely soothe you nature will definitely give relief to you so this is the message of the poem nature can comfort you go back to the lap of nature this can be considered as the message of this poem sunrise on the hills by henry wadsworth longfellow this is the message of almost all nature poems nature poems give that message nature poems glorify the beauty of nature in the first stanza we find how the poet celebrates the beauty of nature when we come to the last stanza we find how he glorifies the beauty of nature the beauty of nature can soothe you the beauty of nature can give solace to you the beauty of nature can comfort you can give relief to you nature is often considered as a soothing force by nature poets nature gives us comfort nature gives us relief nature soothes us whenever we are in difficulty whenever we face obstacles in our life whenever we are in misery distress etc and this is the message of the poem sunrise on the hills by henry wadsworth longfellow whenever you are in trouble whenever you are in difficulty whenever you are in distress go back to the lap of nature nature will comfort you return to nature nature will soothe you we can expect certain questions from this particular chapter the questions that we can expect are the first one prepare a write up on the various images used by the poet henry wadsworth longfellow in the poem sunrise on the hills some annotation questions can be expected certain lines will be there you will be asked to identify the image figure of speech used in those lines and also you will be asked to elaborate the meanings of those lines third one you can expect a write up on the significance of the message of the poem sunrise on the hills these are some of the questions that you can expect from the chapter sunrise on the hills
Now we move on to the second chapter in the third block. The title of the chapter is The Trip of Le Horla by Guy de Maupassant. Guy de Maupassant was a very famous French essayist and short story writer. This is a very beautiful travel essay. It speaks about the hot air balloon journey of Guy de Maupassant and his friends which highlights one of the daring aspects of travel. It speaks about the experience of a group of people who move away from the life on earth for a couple of hours. Hot air ballooning is a thrilling way to experience a calm and peaceful view of a breathtaking or a mind-blowing scenery from a calm and quiet place which is high above the clouds. I have already mentioned the second aspect of a travel. The blog presents travel as an outlet for our adventurous sea. So this chapter presents travel as an outlet for adventurous seal. So many questions can be expected from this particular chapter. The first one and the most important one is you will be asked to prepare a travel essay. So in a travel essay you have to write about, describe the physical features of a place. You should also mention the practical issues related to the travel. Describe your experience in that place and also your personal impressions. When you prepare a travel essay, you have to keep in your view all these four important aspects of a travel essay. When we go through the chapter, the trip of Le Horla, we come across so many beautiful descriptions. The first one, the balloon lies on the ground and it looks like a cake which is made of yellow cloth. The second one, gas is being filled in the balloon and it moves like an enormous worm. Gas is being filled in the balloon through a long tube of yellow cloth. It moves like an enormous verb. Another idea occurs to the minds of the spectators. The idea is that this is the same way nature nourishes young ones till their birth. The long tube of yellow cloth can be compared to the umbilical cord. The fetus is nourished in the womb through that umbilical cord. That beautiful image comes to the mind of the spectators when they watch the balloon which is getting filled by the gas. Then there is another striking description of the balloon. It is considered as a golden prodigious fruit or a fantastic pear. Some other descriptions, some other beautiful passages are there in the chapter in the travel essay The Trip of Le Horla by Guy de Maupassant. As they encountered a warm current of air, some of its invisible blood leaked out of the safety valve. The expression used in the text is invisible blood. Blood gives life to human beings, blood gives life to animals. Similarly, gas can be considered as the life-giving force of a balloon. When they moved across a warm current of air, the balloon expanded and some of its invisible blood leaked out through the safety valve. A beautiful description is used by the author Guy de Maupassant. Then some other expressions like delicious orders from the earth rise to us. Delicious inertia. They were in a delicious inertia. That means they were in a delightful state of rest. They say we no longer speak, think nor live. We float along through space in delicious inertia. We have become something indescribable. Birds who do not even have to flap their wings. 
all memory has disappeared from our minds all trouble from our thoughts we have no more regrets plans nor hopes we look we feel we wildly enjoy this fantastic journey we look we feel we wildly enjoy this fantastic journey so the travelers feel that they do not have any regrets they do not have any hopes they do not have any dreams they live in the present they are not troubled by their past they are not troubled by the regrets they are not troubled by the future fears they just enjoy the trip i have already mentioned it in this class travel helps us to disconnect ourselves from the dull mundane routine life helps us to disconnect ourselves from our regular life so that we may feel refreshed we may feel rejuvenated and re-energized this is one of the striking aspects of travel and that particular aspect gets highlighted in the travel essay trip of leh horla by gide mopasa then towards the end of the travel essay there is another striking expression wriggling like a wounded beast finally the balloon had landed safely the balloon was getting deflated and the movement of the balloon was compared to the wriggling of a wounded beast throughout the travel essay we find so many beautiful expressions so many splendid and spectacular expressions and descriptions so this is one of the features that we have to keep in our mind when we prepare a travel essay use adjectives and adverbs profusely in your travel essay when you describe the physical features of a place when you describe your experience when you describe your impressions so in a travel essay we should also give much importance to our impressions just think about the impressions of gide mopasa this is the way nature nourishes young ones till the birth delicious inertia invisible blood goes out of the safety wall a wriggling of a wounded beast These are some of the impressions of gide mopasa in his travel essay the trip of leh horla the questions that you can expect from this chapter are the first one prepare a travel essay the important features of a travel essay have already been discussed in this session i repeat you have to describe the physical features of that place or a travel essay can be considered as the verbal portrayal of scenic beauty then you have to write about the practical issues related to the travel your experience and your impressions the second question that you can expect from this particular chapter prepare a write up on the qualities of an ideal captain in this chapter you find an ideal captain captain jovis what are the qualities of an ideal captain a captain a true captain an ideal captain must be responsible he must be diplomatic he must be encouraging he must be concerned with the safety of his team members in the chapter you find that captain jovis was concerned with the safety of his team members he knew that a storm was gathering but he did not want to disturb he did not want to frighten his team members he did not want his team members to be panic stricken he did not want his fellow travelers to be panic stricken this is one of the important traits of an ideal captain captain jovis had a great presence of mind he had the ability to remain calm and quiet and had the ability to take quick sensible action in the face of difficult situations he knew that they were heading towards the ocean but he was not at all panic stricken 
he was very vigilant he was closely watching for a safe place for his balloon to land he was keeping careful watch for possible danger he was very alert he was very careful so we can say that he was very alert he was very vigilant an ideal captain should have a clear idea about his mission here captain jovis had a clear idea about his mission he was very industrious he was very hard working so in the chapter the trip of lehorla captain jovis exhibited some of the wonderful traits of a great leader he exhibited wonderful leadership skills so this is one question that you can expect prepare a write up on the qualities of an ideal captain prepare a write up on captain jovis as an ideal captain the next question that you can expect from this particular chapter is a live tv report on the take off of lehorla or the landing of lehorla there you have to use present tense particularly present continuous tense because you have to describe the now aspect of an event the viewers should feel that they are on the spot the live tv report should be very lively and very energetic that is one question that you can expect from this chapter the trip of lehorla certain expressions like we are coming to you live and direct from la ville we are standing near the hot air balloon which is about to take off some 300 spectators are here watching anxiously for the take off of this balloon this huge balloon etc such expressions can be used in your live tv report so two questions live tv report of the take off of lehorla and the landing of lehorla and the question that you can expect from this particular chapter is to prepare a newspaper report on the take off or the landing of the balloon the next question prepare a write up on the do's and don'ts while planning a trip some striking expressions will be there in your question paper from this particular chapter as annotation questions probably you will be asked to elaborate the meanings of those expressions like invisible blood delicious inertia wriggling like a wounded beast another image occurs to the minds of the spectators this is the way nature nourishes the young ones till the birth etc such expressions can be expected in your question paper these are some of the questions that you can expect from the chapter the trip of lehorla by gide mopasan now we move on to the last chapter the chapter is the sacred turtles of kandava this chapter presents travel as an exploration to the diversities particularly the cultural diversities of a particular land travel is not just an enjoyment of scenic beauty it is not just an outlet for our adventure seal it can also be considered as an exploration to the real identity the true self of a land which is embedded in its culture in its customs traditions practices rituals ritual arts etc this chapter speaks about a particular ritual a practice on the island of kandavu a fijian island the practice of turtle calling every ritual has a legend behind it the ritual of turtle calling has also a legend behind it so you can expect one question prepare a write up on a ritual which is practiced in your locality and the legend behind it that question can be expected some other questions that you can expect from that particular chapter imagine that you are a tourist guide and you get an opportunity to introduce your village to some foreign tourists so prepare the script of 
an introductory speech that you deliver to these foreign tourists introducing your village your locality to them or imagine that you are a tourist guide on the Fijian island called Kandavu and you get an opportunity to introduce Kandavu to some foreign tourists prepare a script of that introductory speech and the question that you can expect from this particular chapter is prepare a travel info it's a very simple question a travel info should consist of certain important features the first one you have to write about how to get there you have to write about the important tourist attractions in that place the attractions that the travelers should not miss you should also mention about the place of dining and lodging mention about the cuisine of the land etc so these are some of the important features that you have to incorporate in a travel info that is one question that you can expect and you find a specimen of this travel info on page number 96 another question that you can expect from this particular chapter is prepare a write-up for a travel brochure the write-up should be very brief catchy or attractive you have to write about the physical features write about the historical and cultural significance of the place etc the write-up should be so attractive that it should draw the attention of the readers to that place that is another question that you can expect from the chapter the sacred turtles of Kandavu an extract from a Fijian legend and the question that you can expect from this particular chapter who were really punished the two women from the village of Namona or the men folk from Nabukile village who were really punished we know that the two women were really punished nothing happened to the villages of Nabukulev. There was a storm, but the Nabukulev villages, they threw these two women who were transformed into turtles overboard. No damage was done to them, but the two women, they were transformed into turtles. They lost their identity. They lost their self-respect. And this is a very important issue discussed in that chapter sacred turtles of Kandavu who were really punished the two women were really punished so whenever a disaster strikes whenever there is a war who are going to suffer the worst women and children are going to suffer the worst this idea gets emphasized there in the chapter the sacred turtles of Kandavu so these are some of the questions that you can expect from that chapter the sacred turtles of Kandava. You have to go through all these chapters, go through the important ideas discussed in this session, internalize some of the important ideas discussed, highlighted, and be equipped for your exams. That's all for the day. Thank you.